Thor, Odin's son, the Norse god of thunder, the hero of Asgard, and a founding member of the Avengers. Thor Odin's son is one of the most revered heroes in the Marvel Universe, his story beginning many, many thousands of years ago, before any other hero. But how does it all begin? Well, let's find out. Thor is the blood son of Odin, all father of the Asgardians, and Jord, who was also known as Gaia, the goddess who was one of the elder gods. He was born in a cave created by Odin in Norway and raised in Asgard. Odin sought to father a son whose power would derive from both Asgard and Midgard, as the Earth Realm is called by Asgardians, and hence he sought to mate with Jord. Odin's wife, the goddess Frigga, acted as Thor's mother from that time onward. Thor never learned about his true mother until much later in his life. The young Thor was raised alongside Loki Lorthy's son, who had been adopted by Odin after Loki's frost giant father Lorthy had been killed in battle. For all of their childhood, Loki was jealous of Thor. Loki's jealousy, which grew to hatred, resulted in a desire to kill Thor. This hatred would last for centuries. By the time Thor had turned eight, Odin sent him to Nidavellir, the land of the dwarves, to bid the dwarf lords Brock and Eitri to create three treasures for Asgard's ruler. Among the three was the legendary hammer Mjolnir, although Loki sabotaged the creation of the hammer so that its handle was made too short. Odin bestowed various enchantments upon the hammer, including one that made it impossible for anyone to lift it, except someone who was truly worthy of wielding it. Odin then declared that he was reserving the use of Mjolnir for Thor, who would receive it on the day that great deeds of selfless valor had proved him worthy of its power. For years, Thor strove to become physically strong enough to wield the hammer, and was responsible for many heroic deeds. Finally, when Thor was 16, Odin sent him and his friends Boulder and Sif on a quest to teach him what was truly required to wield Mjolnir, a pure heart. This quest led to a confrontation against the Norn Queen Carnilla, and Boulder drove her away with a demonstration of moral purity. As a reward, the sword that they went on a quest to forge is granted to Boulder himself. Before Thor was 20, he had already become Asgard's greatest warrior and fallen in love with the goddess Lady Sif. In fact, when Sif had been kidnapped by storm giants and ended up as a prisoner of Hela, Thor offered his own life in exchange for Sif's freedom. The Goddess of Death was so impressed by the young Thunder God's nobility that she let both of them go. The romance between Sif and Thor waxed and waned over the centuries. According to the severed eye of Odin, it was Odin himself who later caused Thor to live on Earth under the mortal guises of the Germanic hero Sigmund and his son Siegfried. In these two roles, Thor played a major role in Odin's efforts to regain the dangerously powerful Ring of the Nibelung. His mortal geysers were both killed in battle, but Odin resurrected Thor, erasing all memory he had as a mortal. Thor would frequently return to Midgard to promote his worship among the Vikings, until he found zealous Viking worshippers had slaughtered the inhabitants of a Christian monastery in his name. Shocked and ashamed, Thor withdrew from mortal affairs altogether, and the worship of the Asgardians ceased, only being remembered by Midgardians as myths and legends. In the year 893, 
Thor discovered the corpse of a Native American god washed up on the shores of Scandinavia, coming into conflict with a deicidal alien named Gore the God Butcher. Attacked by Gore, Thor wounded him with a thunderbolt and tracked him to a cave near Lake Ladoga, Russia. Gore captured Thor and tortured him for 17 days, but Thor's worshippers tracked them down and rescued him, enabling Thor to sever one of Gore's arms and seemingly kill him. Sometime later, Thor was attacked by monsters made of living darkness, minions of Gore, who dragged him through time to the distant future. Enslaved on the black world of Gore, Thor encountered his future granddaughters and attempted to aid their rebellion against Gore. Rescued by Thor the Avenger, his future self from the 21st century, and Allfather Thor from the distant future, Thor helped them vanquish Gore and would have claimed Gore's weapon, the primordial symbiote All Black, for himself, but was stopped by Allfather Thor. Thor's parents were kidnapped by the dark elf Malekith, and he set up a group with his future selves to help them. In his desire to save his mother from being consumed by the darkness, he rushed to her aid, without any concern for himself nor his future selves. This event led to him becoming worthy of wielding Mjolnir for the first time. During the 11th century AD, Thor faced off with the celestial-powered mutant Apocalypse, one of the most dangerous enemies of the X-Men. At one point during World War II, Adolf Hitler succeeded in contacting Thor and deceived him into aiding the cause of the Germans, the descendants of the people who had once worshipped him. Thor, therefore, clashed with the invaders and nearly killed the second Union Jack with a blast of lightning from his enchanted hammer. Learning that Hitler was evil, Thor vowed to aid him no more and withdrew most of the electricity in Union Jack's body back into his hammer, somehow restoring him to health in the process. Following the war, Thor was summoned to assist the Olympians on a handful of occasions, such as when he helped defend Olympus from an invasion by creatures spawned from the mind of Professor Bufanov, rescuing Venus from the nation of Kassarobia, a prisoner of its ruling sultan, and helping Ares and Venus defend New York City from mad inventor John Dark and his mechanized army. Thor led an active, adventurous life in Asgard, doing battle with frost giants and other enemies of the Golden Realm. Odin watched Thor become more and more arrogant, and over the years he grew increasingly dissatisfied with Thor's headstrong behaviour and excessive pride. On one occasion, Thor violated a truce between the Asgardians and the frost giants, thereby nearly starting another war. Finally, while Thor was engaged in a brawl in an Asgardian tavern, Odin summoned him to his presence. Odin decided that enough was enough, and he needed to teach Thor a lesson in humility. He forced Thor to surrender his hammer and send him to Earth in the mortal guise of a crippled young medical student named Donald Blake, with no memory of his true Asgardian identity. As Blake, Thor learned the value of humble perseverance in dealing with his injured leg, and he came to care for the sick and dying, first as a medical student and later as a successful physician. After leaving medical school, Donald opened a private practice in New York and quickly gained renown as a great surgeon. After Thor had spent ten years in the role of Blake, Odin planted within Blake's mind the suggestion to take a vacation in Norway. There, Blake encountered a party of alien Cronins, also known as the Stone Men from Saturn. Blake fled from the Cronins into a cavern, the very same one that Thor was born in millennia ago, where Odin had left Thor's hammer in the enchanted form of a wooden cane. 
Trapped in the cavern by a great boulder, Blake struck the boulder with the cane in frustrated anger and was transformed back into his true godly form of Thor. As Thor, he escaped the cavern and droned off the Cronins. At first, Thor still had no memory of his past life as an Asgardian god, although as months passed, more of his memories returned. Finally, a few years later, Odin revealed to him the false nature of the Blake identity and the reason for it. Thor maintained his Blake identity on Earth and continued his medical practice. Part of his affinity for Earth was his subconscious realization that his maternal heritage was of this world. The other part was simply his love for humanity and his need to experience those things that only mortals could know. He had also fallen in love with a mortal named Jane Foster, who worked as a nurse for Donald Blake, but Odin disapproved of their romance. Thor came to divide his time between Earth and Asgard, and does so to this day, and battled many villains that would become persistent threats on Earth, including the Radioactive Man, the Cartons, and his own brother, Loki. After some time coming to Earth, Loki, at this point trapped in the Isles of Silence, started a chain of events that led to the world reporting on a rampaging Hulk. He also diverted the distress signal meant for the Fantastic Four to Thor, causing him to go confront the Hulk. Unbeknownst to Loki, several other heroes picked up the signal. Iron Man, Ant-Man, and the Wasp. After Loki was defeated by the combined forces of these heroes, they decided to join together as a team known as the Avengers. And thus, Earth's mightiest heroes were born. Thor continues to serve with the team while also working with other superheroes, like Doctor Strange, whom he also operated on as Donald Blake. He has, however, left the team several times for extended leaves of absence. Sometime later, a cybernetically enhanced alien known as Beta Ray Bill arrived on Earth and proved worthy of lifting Mjolnir the first person other than Thor to do so. Odin created a new hammer for Bill named Stormbreaker and transferred the enchantment that enabled Thor to change into mortal form to Bill's hammer. This allowed Bill to assume his pre-enhanced form, but also removed the Blake persona from existence. With the aid of Nick Fury, public director of S.H.I.E.L.D., Thor adopted a new secret identity, that of a construction worker, Sigurd Jarlsson. Thor didn't actually become mortal in his Jarlsson identity, he simply dressed as a contemporary human and wore glasses. After Odin disappeared during his battle against the fire demon Surtur, the people of Asgard wished to make Thor Odin's designated heir, their new ruler. Unwilling to give up his guardianship of Earth or his life of adventure, at least not yet, Thor declined the offer and instead nominated Balder the Brave to be Asgard's ruler. Balder ruled until Odin returned and reclaimed the throne. For a time, Thor was merged with the human Eric Masterson, an architect who first met Thor as Jarlsson. The two men would exchange bodies using Mjolnir, as Thor had done before as Blake. After Loki attempted to kill Susan Austin, the woman who cared for Eric's son, Thor became furious and slew Loki. As punishment, he was exiled from Earth, and Eric Masterson was given the Thunder God's power to continue in the role of Thor. Eventually, after Loki reappeared, Eric was able to find Thor who had been hidden within Eric's own subconscious and rescued him from exile. Eric had proven himself to be a hero in his own right, and Odin rewarded him with the enchanted mace Thunderstrike. Taking Thunderstrike as his alias, Eric continued to serve as a hero on Earth until he died heroically after battling the Egyptian death god Seth. 
Thor grieved for Eric, who had become a close friend on Midgard. Odin and Thor eventually learned that the constant shift of identity and sharing of power Odin had encouraged had driven Thor insane. Marked by the appearance of a Valkyrie, who was a manifestation of Thor's insanity. With the assistance of the Infinity Watch, Thanos, and Doctor Strange, Thor regained his sanity, and Odin came to realize the error he had made. Thor participated in the Onslaught event, which began with the dangerous melding of part of Magneto's evil essence with the mind of Charles Xavier. He contributed by battling the entity Onslaught and contributing medical assistance to the injured. Thor disappeared battling Onslaught and wound up on the new Counter-Earth created by Franklin Richards, including the, event the rest of the Avengers and X-Men. Later, everybody returned home to Earth-616, the mainstream Marvel Universe. Once again attempting to thwart Ragnarok, the end of all times and the apocalypse of Norse mythology, Odin tried to trick the world tree Yggdrasil into believing that Ragnarok had already happened. To do so, the Asgardians would be transformed into mortals so that they wouldn't be recognized as gods. Odin intended that Thor would restore the Asgardians to normal but Seth accidentally prematurely activated the plan. When Thor returned to Earth after the Onslaught event, the Asgardians had managed to regain their identities, but were then captured by the Dark Gods. Ultimately, Thor rescued his people from the Dark Gods with the aid of Hercules and the Asgardian Destroyer, or simply the Destroyer. Eventually, Tragedy struck when the fire demon Surtur resurfaced. After Odin fell in battle against Surtur, Asgard was left without a ruler. Thor reluctantly accepted the throne and assumed his father's power, the Odin Force, becoming much more powerful than before. He also remained separate from the Jake Olsen aspect of himself, his current mortal guise. Without the influence of his connection to humanity, Thor became more distant and less empathetic to the needs of man. Thor became determined to restore the gods of Asgard to their former place on Earth as beings to be worshipped, merging Earth with Asgard to accomplish this end. Thor's increased activity on Earth resulted in a resurgence of followers for the Asgardians, and a Church of Thor soon emerged. Thor's willingness to fight for the lives of his followers ultimately set him against his fellow Avengers when he attempted to overthrow the government of Sokovia. Earth citizens became increasingly wary of Thor, and the Consortium of Nations finally launched an assault upon Asgard that reduced it to rubble. In a disaster that followed, an enraged Thor lost an arm battling the humans. From that point on, Thor devoted himself to Earth's conquest to bring order to humanity. He ruled Earth for nearly 200 years. In that time, he married the Enchantress, and she bore him a son, Magni. Thor finally came to realize that he had done wrong, and used a device created by Zarko to travel back in time and prevent Asgard's destruction. This realization came from a re-emergence of Jake Olsen, his mortal self. He re-emerged as his younger self with Jake Olsen to ensure that Olsen's humanity would prevent his future from occurring in that timeline. Returning Asgard to its own realm, the Asgardians spent some time to mourn the deaths of Brock and Eitri, the dwarf lords who forged Mjolnir. During this time, Loki joined forces with Surtur, 
using weapons created from the same forge from which Mjolnir was made, leading to the final Ragnarok. Loki's forces attacked Asgard, and during the clash, Mjolnir was destroyed, and Thor called to the Avengers for help. They fought together for a while, but eventually Balder was killed in battle. Thor sent his allies back to protect his comrades, ordering them to protect Earth. He battled more with his old allies, including the Warriors 3, Sif, and Beta Ray Bill. Thor decided that he must seek the wisdom of Odin and bring an end to this, only to find the Odin Force in the form of a young boy revealing that it had abandoned Thor when he returned to Asgard because he wasn't worthy of wielding such power. In order to seek wisdom and prove himself worthy, the Odin Force led Thor to the Well of Mimir. It required sacrifice, so he gave up one eye, but the well didn't fill with water. It's here that Thor discovered that he can't take the path already travelled, and since Odin had already given up one eye for wisdom, Thor's exact same sacrifice was worthless. So Thor took his own path, giving up both of his eyes, and permanently blinding him. And it was here the well filled, and he gained the wisdom he sought. He saw every Ragnarok of the past, and discovered that Ragnarok was an endless cycle, but he needed more knowledge, so he sought the magic of the runes, so he did what his father did to obtain that magic, and he hung himself on Yggdrasil, the world tree. But while his father hung himself halfway to death, Thor hung himself all the way to death. However, at this point, Thor had become so powerful, he was beyond death itself. Willing himself back to life, and meeting those who sit above in shadow. The gods above all gods, who created the Ragnarok cycle in order to endlessly feed off the gods' energies. Thor rejected those who sit above in shadows, becoming Rune King Thor, and returning to the battle, eviscerating Loki in battle, and requesting Surtur rebuild Mjolnir. In return, Thor opened the gateways to Asgard and Surtur's home realm Muspelheim. Surtur waged war with Asgard and Ragnarok officially began. As this was happening, Thor travelled to Yggdrasil destroyed the tapestry of fate and the world tree, thereby ending the Ragnarok cycle forever, freeing his people from the binds of fate. After all this happened, Thor entered the Thor sleep to rest, for now. As Thor rested after the events of the final Ragnarok, Mjolnir returned to Earth landing in a deserted field and inadvertently freeing Doctor Doom from his extra-dimensional prison along the way. Donald Blake claimed the hammer, returned from oblivion after Odin's death and the breaking of the spell that undid his existence. This had occurred during the superhuman civil war, and during the war, a clone of Thor named Ragnarok was created by Tony Stark and released during a battle between pro and anti-registration heroes. To the shock of both sides, he killed Bill Foster during the fighting, a long-time Avenger. Travelling back to the Void, Donald Blake convinced Thor that he had ended the Ragnarok cycle, and that if he returned to Earth, he could rebuild Asgard and restore his Asgardian friends and allies, informing him that he could only return with great pain. Thor was attacked by a horde of creatures. Disappearing, Donald Blake advised Thor that if he was to live again, 
He had to want to live again. Through the horde, Thor saw Mjolnir and reached for it. Grabbing it, a great bolt of lightning struck, throwing the horde clear of him. And Thor stood again, reborn. Thor used Mjolnir to recreate Asgard's capital in Oklahoma. Soon after, Iron Man met Thor in New Orleans. He greeted Thor as a friend, but explained that he couldn't just appear and recreate Asgard here on Earth, even though he did now own the land. Thor told Stark that he knew of the clone that he used, and how violated he felt that he used such an abomination to wage war against other heroes, many of whom Thor considered as close as family. Seeking a compromise, Stark rationalized that Asgard could be considered a foreign embassy, with diplomatic immunity granted to its inhabitants. Thor deemed this acceptable. Soon after returning, Thor found the first of the lost guardians, Heimdall, and restored him to his true form. In Africa, Thor restored the Warriors Three to their true forms. Later, Thor attempted to free several captured Asgardians who were still trapped in mortal form from the Destroyer. He unknowingly freed Loki, reborn as a woman, who was working with Doctor Doom to allow Thor to free him from his mortal form. Although Thor successfully restored most of the Asgardians, he didn't attempt to find his father. During the Thor sleep, Thor had a vision in which he discovered that on a subconscious level, he didn't do so because he wished to be free of his father, and that Odin fought an eternal cycle of battle with Surtur, dying and being reborn each day between life and death. During the Skrull invasion of Earth, the shapeshifting Skrulls pulled Beta Ray Bill out of limbo, the limbo that he had been trapped within during the final Ragnarok, and enabled a Super Skrull to wield his mystic hammer Stormbreaker. Balder and Beta Ray Bill commanded the gods against the Skrull troops. Thor arrived, retrieved Stormbreaker, and collapsed all of Asgard itself on top of the scrolls. Thor flew to New York and joined with the gathered forces of nearly a hundred other superheroes to repel the scroll attack. There, Thor was forced to sacrifice a fellow founding member of the Avengers, the Wasp. When the scrolls turned her into a last resort biological weapon that would have destroyed the planet. Loki travelled to the past, ensuring Bor, father of Odin and first king of Asgard, would perish in battle against the Frost Giants. In the present day, Loki revived Bor in New York City and placed a spell on him to make him mistake everything around him for an enemy so he would attack everything in sight, including Thor. Sensing a portion of Odin's power inside what he saw was a demon, Bor attacked Thor, attempting to avenge his dead son. Thor was forced to kill Bor, fearing the entire planet would be destroyed in the wake of their battle. Loki reminded Balder that the resurrected Bor was technically king of Asgard when Thor killed him, and the punishment for killing a king was banishment in Asgard. Balder was forced to agree, and was made monarch in his place. After Thor's banishment, Loki made arrangements to have all Asgardians, not just Asgard itself, move to Latveria at the invitation of Doctor Doom. With Mjolnir badly damaged from his battle with his revived grandfather, Thor was secluded from all but his own alter ego. Loki revealed that her female body had been meant for Sif, and that the transfer from his female form to his male form would probably kill Sif's host. After seeking Doctor Strange's aid in healing Mjolnir by sacrificing the portion of the Odin Force, Thor managed to save Sif by freeing her spirit. Loki was returned to his male form. 
They deduced that Loki and Doom were working together and confronted Doom, Loki, and their brethren. In the end, Doom was teleported away by Loki, Balder declaring that the Asgardians were returning to Asgard. During the Siege of Asgard, brought about by the Dark Avengers, Thor rushed to the aid of Asgard against notorious Spider-Man villain Norman Osborn and his invading Dark Avengers. Osborn ordered the Sentry, an extremely powerful hero, to destroy Asgard before the horrified eyes of Thor. The Sentry, then fully possessed by his evil side, the Void, proceeded to pummel the heroes until Loki used the Norn Stones to empower them. Realizing that the hero's power was coming from Loki, the Void attacked him. Loki's attempts to defend himself were unsuccessful, and he apologized to Thor before dying. Spurred on by unabridged rage, Thor and the others attacked the Void, but to no avail, until Tony Stark rammed a hammer helicarrier into their opponent at full speed, turning the Void into his human form, Rob Reynolds, who begged Thor to kill him. Thor refused, saying that he would pay for his crimes in prison and prepared to arrest him. But Robert unwillingly transformed back into the Void. Left with no other choice, Thor struck the Void with a lightning blast, leaving nothing but a charred skeleton behind. Thor then wrapped his own cape around Sentry's corpse and disposed of it by throwing it into the sun. Balder lifted Thor's exile and appointed Thor as his advisor. Thor then rejoined the Avengers. After the events of Siege, Asgard was left in ruins because of Loki's doing, but still Thor mourned for him. After fighting the Deesir and saving Hel, Thor asked Hela to speak with Loki, only for Hela to tell him that he didn't dwell in Hel. In part of his deal to grant a piece of Hell for the dead, Loki had himself written out of the books of Hell, meaning his soul was out there, vulnerable to the Deesir. Thor refused to believe it, knowing that his stepbrother would have had something else planned. Asgard was rebuilt and Thor became more melancholic and saddened. Sorrowful, Thor missed his brother who had made him laugh like no other when they were children. Against everyone's wishes, Thor went looking for Loki and found him in Paris, reborn as a child with no memories of his past or his identity. He was living as a street hustler named Surua. After chasing the boy down, Thor revealed he was his brother and a god, and that despite Loki's former villainy, Thor couldn't imagine life without him, and wanted to bring him home. Though Sarua was reluctant to believe Thor, the boy finally admitted that he couldn't remember anything about his past, and that even his name was fake. Crying, Sarua told Thor that he had dreams in which he had done horrible things, and that he was scarred by that those were his memories. Thor suggested that Loki should think of his amnesia as a gift. Convinced, Sarua grabbed Mjolnir and turned back into Loki, though powerless, without his memories, and still a youth. When the World Eaters invaded the Nine Realms, Thor also brought Odin back to life, much to the latter exasperation who yelled at Loki, calling him a killer and an abomination responsible for Asgard's fall scaring the boy away. Thor became angry with his father and called him a horrible, unlovable man for screaming at a child who was very much the boy Odin had raised. The Allfather in turn angrily told Thor that he had everything with both him and Loki dead, but that he just couldn't stand the quiet. Even though Loki couldn't remember his past acts and had become a child completely, the Asgardians still hated and despised him, bullying him mercilessly and even attempting to kill him. 
The only one who protected him was Thor, telling his brother that things would get better and that trust would come along with affection. As a result, Loki came to idolise and deeply love his older brother, doing all he could to help and trying to become a better person than he was in his previous life. Sometime after, the daughter of the Red Skull, Sin, lifted a strange hammer in Antarctica and was transformed into Skadi. She then freed the enigmatic serpent, who claimed to be the true All-Father of Asgard. Sensing this, Odin retreated from Midgard. Thor objected and so was beaten into submission by Odin, who also took his hammer away from him. Odin recreated Asgard as a war world, intending to raise Midgard and defeat the serpent once more. After escaping with Loki's help, Thor was banished back to Midgard, though not before having Mjolnir return to him. After a short reunion with the Avengers, he set off to Antarctica, where the serpent had recreated his dread citadel. He confronted the serpent but was sent to New York, where he encountered Null and Angria, two of the serpent's minions named the Worthy, who were actually the Hulk and Thing possessed by the serpent. He managed to defeat Angria by impaling his body with Mjolnir. Enraged by the fact that he had to hurt the Thing so badly, he attacked Null with intense fury and then blasted him into the upper atmosphere. He collapsed shortly after. The Avengers carried him to Asgard, where he was healed and given the Odin Sword, called Ragnarok, to slay the Serpent. Arriving in Broxton, he was able to kill the Serpent, who took the form of a giant snake, but Thor died in the process, fulfilling the prophecy of old. Thor's corpse was buried in Asgard. As his body burned, a shape was suddenly seen within the fire, and from the flames, Tanaris was born, the loud-mouthed, boisterous god of thunder, both new hero and long-time Avenger. Welcomed by his teammates, only Loki seemed to notice that Tanaris had not always been around. At the same time, Thor's spirit awoke, and Donald Blake was separated from him somehow. He found himself on a god arc, facing the god-eating monster Demogorg. Loki wasn't affected by the spell which changed everybody's memories, and he tried to find a way to resurrect Thor, asking for the Silver Surfer's help and contacting Donald Blake. Taking his cane, he turned it back into Mjolnir and returned to Thor, and restored everyone's memories of him. He was able to escape from the afterlife, and fight for the newly named Asgardia from an invasion of trolls and to unmask Tanaris as a transformed Ulic. After discovering the corpses of long lost gods, Thor realised that Gore the God Butcher was still alive and began hunting him. During his quest to stop Thor from killing every god in existence, Thor found himself in a distant future, where he encountered his older self. With the help of his future self and a past self Gore had enslaved, Thor managed to stop Gore from activating a bomb which would have killed every god across every time and space. Not long afterwards, Thor learned that his old love Jane Foster had cancer. He additionally confronted a returning Malekith, who had set out to kill every Dark Elf who wouldn't follow him. The Odin Sun found himself pitted against Roxxon in a confrontation which left the city of Broxton in ruins. While the rest of the Asgardians left Earth, Thor remained and moved his entire castle from Asgardia to Broxton so the residents of the town had a place to live. During the events of the Secret Wars, God Emperor Doom created an army of Thors from different universes named the Thor Corps. They served God Emperor Doom on Battleworld until Jane Foster, Thor Girl, 
infiltrated their core and convinced them to fight against Doom for the heroes of Thor's universe. After the battle was concluded and Doom lost his power, Mr. Fantastic of the Fantastic Four took his power and used it to recreate the multiverse, with Thor Odin's son being recreated in the process. Well guys, thank you very much for listening to this. I decided to do something a little bit different, something that I had been thinking of doing for a bit. Um, yeah, decided to do a dramatic reading of a Marvel character. If you guys enjoyed it, please let me know. I'm planning on doing more of these in the future. And, yeah, without anything else to mention, uh, I will see you guys in the next video. Have a good one.